Hi, my name is Ali Kararudi and I'm a an scuba diving instructor with PADI. In this video, I will be walking you through the steps of how to understand and use PADI recreational dive table. The purpose of the recreational dive planner is to make all dives no decompression dives. Proper planning assures that all dives, single or repetitive, are within the no decompression limits by controlling the length of the dive, the depth of the dive, and the surface interval between dives. Use of the recreational dive planner requires having and using an accurate depth gauge, an underwater timer, a slate and pencil, and the planner itself. You need to know the depth of each dive so you can determine the maximum time allowed, or you must limit your depth to a specific planned maximum depth. There are some very important considerations when working with the RDP. Always consult a recreational dive planner before each dive to be sure you know your no decompression limit. Note the time on an underwater slate and carry it with you and also note the no decompression limit for the next deeper depth. In case you accidentally exceed your depth limit, this information will become very handy. Remember that your deepest dive is always the first, and each successive dive is to an equal or shallower depth than the preceding dive. If your time limits are short, consider making a shallower dive to permit more time. As you can see here, the recreational dive planner table is actually three tables linked together. Each of the three tables provides information of planning dives with an accepted nitrogen levels. When using RDP, there are some general rules and jargons that you need to be aware of. Let's start with the definition of the bottom time. So the bottom time is the total time in minutes from the beginning of the descent until the beginning of final ascent to the surface or safety stop. So as you can see here, uh, when you start your dive from the surface going down, that time is being counted, and then you're gonna swim under, go around, do your dive, till the point that you decide now you wanna ascend back up. And notice that the ascent time shown with T3 in this slide is not being counted as a part of your bottom time. So basically bottom time is T1 plus T2 and that's it. While working with RDP, there are some times that you need to round numbers. In these kind of cases, we follow two very critical rules. You have to use the exact or next greater depth shown for the depths of all dives, and you have to use the exact or next greater time shown for the times of all dives. Remember, this means you will always round up. For example, if you want to calculate something for the depth of 71 feet, let's take a look at the table. As you can see, we have 70, but we don't have 71. We jump up to 80. At this point, when you want to round, 71 will be rounded up to 80 and not rounded down to 70. Remember, considering the mathematics rules, this is kind of counterintuitive, but this is for your safety because when you choose the higher depth or higher time, basically you're giving yourself a better margin of safety rather than rounding it down and putting yourself in possible danger. Same story happens for the times. For example, look here. For the depth of 90 feet, you have 4 meter and then 7, 9, 10, and so on and so forth. So if you want to do a calculation for the depth of 5 meter, you don't round it down back to 4, but you round it up to 7. So 7 minutes is what you're going to look at. Also, any dive planned to 35 feet or less should be calculated as a dive to 35 feet. Notice that the beginning of the table depth series starts with 35, so we don't have nothing less than 35. Remember, as we always say, 
you have to slowly ascend from all dives at a rate that does not exceed 60 feet per minute or one foot per second. Slower is also acceptable and even encouraged. Be a safe diver, meaning slowly ascend from every dive. Remember, if you're planning a dive in a cold water or under conditions that may inflict stress, you have to plan the dive assuming that the depth is 10 feet deeper than the actual depth. If you are planning repetitive dives, you have to plan so that each successive dive is to shallower depth, meaning you will start with the deepest dive ever that you want to do on that set of dives, and then you go with the next the next the shallower one and the next shallower one, and therefore the last one you're going to go there is going to be the shallowest. So deepest first, shallowest last. Never follow a dive with a deeper dive. It should never happen. So if you were to the 60 feet, you can never go for 65 or 70 feet and such. And always plan your deepest dive first. General guideline says plan all your repetitive dives in a way that none of them is deeper than 100 feet, even the first one. Now let's talk about the depth limit. Generally, limit your maximum depth to your training and experience level. As an open water diver, limit your dives to maximum depth of 60 feet. Divers with greater training and experience should generally limit themselves to a maximum depth of 100 feet. Divers with deep diver training and a reasonable objective may dive as deep as 130 feet. All dives should be planned as no decompression dives and no dive should ever exceed the maximum depth limit for recreational scuba, which is 130 feet. Decompression diving is beyond the parameters of recreational dive planner and therefore it's impossible to be planned using DRDP. Never exceed the limits of the recreational dive planner and whenever possible, avoid diving to the limits of the planner. 140 feet is for emergency purposes only, so do not dive to this depth as much as you can. Before we start using examples and talk about how to use table, let's talk about one last thing, and that's the safety stop. A safety stop for three to five minutes at 15 feet is recommended at the end of all dives. A safety stop for three minutes at 15 feet is actually required any time that you come within three pressure groups of need no decompression limits, which we're going to discuss it very soon, and for any dive to a depth of 100 feet or deeper. When you begin planning your first dive of the day, you consult table one. In fact, if you're only planning to make one dive within a six hour period, table one is the only table you need to use. Table one has two purposes. It tells you the maximum amount of time you can stay at a certain depth on your first dive, and it tells you how much nitrogen you have in your body after a dive. The easiest way to learn how to use table one is to actually follow an example. Okay, assume that we want to plan a dive to a reef that we know lies in the depth of 45 feet. The question would be, what is the maximum time we can stay at 45 feet so that we don't exceed the limits of no decompression diving? So what we do is we start from the left side where you see the start. As you can see, it says depth and of course this one is imperial so it says by feet and then we have different depths that the table can help us calculate for remember we discussed the fact that if a number does not exist on the table we always round up so in this case 45 feet is not on the table so we are at 40 and then we jump to 50 right so 45 is not on the table therefore we have to round it up to the higher depth of 50 feet 
So that's the depth we want to look at. Then look at the numbers that they come beneath that. These are all times by minute, right? So these are the times by minute, and we will discuss how to use these ones later down the road. But for now, the only thing we want to do is we want to look all the way down till we arrive at this black box which shows the maximum limit. Look at the guide of the table over here. It says the black boxes show no decompression limits. So 50 and we come all the way down and we arrive at 80. So the answer to this question is simply 80 feet is the maximum, uh, sorry, 80 minutes as the maximum time we can stay at 50 feet of depth. It is very unlikely that you would spend an entire dive at exactly just one depth. However, when using the RDP table for the purpose of calculation, you will use the deepest depth you reach during the dive regardless of how long you actually remain in that depth. If you are planning only one dive, this is all the information you need. Your dive must not exceed 80 minutes and that's it. Similarly, you will note that a dive to 60 feet has an NDL of 55 minutes and a dive to 40 feet has an NDL of 140 minutes and so on and so forth. On many occasions, you will make more than one dive. You must account for the nitrogen you absorb on the first dive when planning your next dive. The nitrogen left in your tissues after the first dive is called residual nitrogen. You will use table one to tell you how much residual nitrogen you have in your body. Continuing with the previous example, assume that you remained at 45 feet for uh, 42 out of 80 allowable minutes. If you follow the 50 foot column down until you find 42 minutes, you will see that 42 minute does not exist. So you will go for the next greater time, in this case, 44 minutes, which is right down here. Okay, and then if you move all the way to the right, you will arrive at letter N over here. This letter is your pressure group or PG. And this represents the amount of residual nitrogen in your body after the dive. You use your pressure group when you move to table two. Before moving to table two, let's look at a couple of examples. Consider a dive to 53 feet for 40 minutes. What is the pressure group after this dive? Okay, so the first step would be again finding the right depth. The depth here says 53, but looking at the depth axis, we don't have a 53. So we have to go for the next largest, which is 60, and therefore this is the depth that we actually are going to go ahead and choose. Okay, so next in the line is figuring out uh, where the time is. In this case, the time for us is 40 minutes. If we come all the way down to find 40, we will notice 40 is between 39 and 42. So what we have to do is we have to go for the next largest time, which is 42. And now we have 42 down here. Okay, so. At this point, the only thing is to go all the way to the right to find the right group, which in this case is group Q. So pretty simple. We start at the depth. Again, uh, make sure you're rounding up to the next largest depth. Same story for the time. We come down for the time and round up to the next largest time and then move to the right to find the pressure group, which in this case, the correct answer is going to be B, pressure group Q. As time goes by after a dive, residual nitrogen leaves your body. You use table two to determine how much residual nitrogen your body eliminates during a surface interval, that is the time on the surface between two dives. You enter table two using the pressure group you found in table one. The numbers within the boxes on table two are times expressed in hours and minutes. For example, 
This box is representing the times between 2 hours 19 minutes to 5 hours 19 minutes. Or let's pick another one over here. This box over here is representing the times between 18 minutes up to 21 minutes. Or this one is 54 minutes up to 59 minutes. Okay? Be careful that those numbers are included themselves. Okay, so continuing on the example for 45 foot dive for 42 minutes, which yielded pressure group N, and you can see it right now, we move into table 2. Horizontally uh, from the pressure group N, and if we consider a surface interval of 62 minutes for this diver, so think about it, 62 minutes is basically one hour and two minutes, right? So we want to find the box that is somewhere between one hour and one and eight. So that time sits between one hour and one hour, eight minutes. So we horizontally move all the way till we find the surface interval. When we find the box, then we move vertically all the way down so that now we are going to arrive at the new pressure group, which is the pressure group after the surface interval. This means in one hour, a diver with a pressure group of N loses enough residual nitrogen to move to pressure group D. With this new pressure group, now you can proceed to table 3 to plan next dive. You use table 3 to find out how much residual nitrogen expressed in minutes you have remaining in your body prior to entering the water for a repetitive dive. This amount is referred to as residual nitrogen time or RNT. Essentially, table 3 takes your pressure group and converts it into the time limit for your next dive. Continuing with the same example, you vary in pressure group D at the bottom of table 2 after your surface interval of 62 minutes. At this point, you have to flip the recreational dive table and find pressure group D along the top row, which is going to bring you all the way up here. Along the left side of table 3, you will find the depths for the repetitive dive. So all the depths are right over here. Okay. For the sake of example, assume you plan your repetitive dive to 38 feet, which I have put it here on the slide so you can see it. Some of you already have guessed that we have to go for 40 feet, right? Again, when the actual depth does not appear on the table, you use the next greater depth, in this case, 40 feet. You have to locate 40 feet on the left side, which is the depth now, and then move horizontally till you come across where the column D is. And now you have two numbers to look at. Looking at the legend of the table, you will see the number on the top, which is in the white area, indicates residual nitrogen time or RNT in minutes, which you add to the actual bottom time or ABT. The blue part, which on this video, I'm just showing both of them white, but on your table, you will see the one on the bottom is colored in blue, indicates adjusted no decompression limit or ANDL. Actual bottom time or ABT should not exceed this number. In our example, 25 is the RNT, which you use for returning to table 1 after the repetitive dive. You will learn more about this very shortly. Okay? And 115 is the adjusted no decompression limit. The adjusted no decompression limit is the maximum amount of time you can spend at that depth for the repetitive dive. In this example, because you are in pressure group D going to 38 feet, which is rounded up to 40, 
you may stay underwater no longer than 115 minutes. Note that when you add the numbers contained in any box on table 3, the sum is the no decompression limit in the black boxes in the table 1. The adjusted no decompression limit results from subtracting the RNT from the NDL in table 1. The whole idea is considering the residual nitrogen that you're carrying over from the previous dive as a part of the current dive so you are still staying within the safe limits of the table for no decompression diving. The concept would be more understandable with a couple of examples. So let's let's review one example. Okay, so for example, let's look at this. After a surface interval, you are in pressure group P and planning a dive to 50 feet. What is your adjusted no decompression limit for this dive? Okay, so looking at table three, we first need to find the pressure group P, right? So here is the pressure group P for us. And then the depth is 50 feet, which is a standing over here. So what we need to do is we need to find the intersection of P and 50. So after locating the pressure group P along the top row and finding 50 feet along the left side of the table, the intersection comes to the box that shows us 50 on top and 30 on the bottom. And uh, the adjusted no decompression limit, therefore, would be 30, as we discussed it before. Working with the dive tables and flipping them back and forth could be sometimes confusing, especially for beginners. One way you can avoid confusion and make sure you don't miss any steps when using the dive tables is to graphically represent the dive as a drawing. This is called dive profile, as you can see on the slide right now. So let's, let's look at what we have here. So as you can see, we have a line that represents different dives. So each dive is being represented by one dip. So as you can see, here is dive one, and here is dive two, right? Notice that there's, a, there's blank space for each piece of critical information. If you leave a space blank when drawing a dive profile, you have probably overlooked an important part of using the dive table. So be very careful. Uh, starting from the left, we start with dive one, write the depth over here, okay, the bottom time over here, here we have the safety stop time, the time you spend for safety stop, usually three minutes, then you have the PG, which is the pressure group after dive one, when you're done, you put the PG here, this should be a letter, then you have the surface interval between the dives, this should be based on hours and minutes because remember our table shows surface intervals based on hours and minutes. And then after calculation of the new pressure group, which is the pressure group after surface interval, you put it down here and you will start moving to dive two. Starting dive two with filling out the depth for dive two and the bottom time for dive two, which has a calculation, I'll talk about it momentarily, coming up here, putting the, surf, uh, the safety stop time, usually three minutes. It may change if you uh, meet specific conditions that I'm going to explain later. And then you have the pressure group after dive two, which is the PG here. And this can continue. So this sinusoidal look can continue with as many dives as you want to plan. Remember, the formula to uh, calculating the total bottom time after first dive is going to be residual nitrogen time, the time, the residual nitrogen that you bring in, plus the actual bottom time that it's going to give you the total bottom time, which is going to put the RNT into consideration. The profile of the example we have been using is what you can see over here. So we know 45 feet depth is what we started with. We stayed for 42 minutes at the bottom, which is our actual bottom time. 
At this point, actual is the only thing we have because we don't have no residual from previous dives. Then we came back up, stayed at uh, 50 feet for three minutes for our safety stop, which put uh, us at uh, group N, pressure group. We just did this in this video. And then we had a surface interval of one hour, two minutes. Uh, as you know, one hour is no different from one hour, two minutes, because the range was anything between one hour to one hour, eight minutes. So our pressure group after uh, the surface interval is D. And then the second dive, the repetitive dive, was to the depth of 38. Again, remember, all of these numbers should be less than the previous depth, as we explained before. And then now, in this 38, the only information that we have is the residual nitrogen is at 25. And that's all we know. So good news is, if you are only planning to make two dives, as with that, uh, the first and the repetitive dive, then uh, you've already learned what you need to know, and you're done at this point. However, if you want to make more than two dives, there is just one more step you need to learn, and that's how to get your new pressure group at the end of the repetitive dive. You find your pressure group by using the RNT you found on table three and the bottom time of your repetitive dive on table one. Continuing with the previous example, let's suppose that you will stay underwater for 50 minutes within this dive. So the, the bottom time over here is going to be 50 minutes. Remember, this 50 minutes is the actual time you will stay down there. The reality, the real time, okay? Let me just show you this. So, if we consider 50 minutes to be our actual bottom time, and considering we had 25 minutes worth of residual nitrogen coming from the previous dive to this one, the total bottom time for us is going to end up being 75 minutes, right? Uh, now, all we have to do is, using this total bottom time, the 75 minute that we just calculated, and let me repeat it again, 50 minutes is the real time, the actual time you will be spending on the water, and this 25 minute is the nitrogen credit that you are bringing over from the previous dive, which is going to give you the total bottom time of 75. So using the 75 minutes in table one, you can actually now calculate the pressure group. Let me just bring in table one into this. So at this point, you're dealing with a very simple uh, problem to solve. That's exactly like what we did at the beginning of this video for table one. This time, the depth we're dealing with is going to be 38 feet, and the time is going to be the total time of 75 minutes. Notice, not the actual bottom time, but the total bottom time, which includes the residual nitrogen time. So, it's very simple. You remember what we did. So, I have to find the respective depth. 38 does not exist, so it should be rounded up to 40, right? And then the time is 75. If I come down, you see 75 does not exist, so I have to round it up to uh, 79 over here. And if I now move to the right, the group is going to be group R. As you noticed, it's as simple as solving another problem. And from this point on, you can just repeat. Go to the surface interval now. Go to table three, find the residual nitrogen, do that. As you can see now, you can solve the problems for as many dives as you want. One, two, three, four, five, you just name it. The process is going to be repeating itself after this point. There are some special rules that apply when you plan to make three or more dives in a series of multiple repetitive dives. Making more than three dives in a series is common during diving vacations, like going to a resort or on a liveaboard dive boat. If you are planning three or more dives beginning with the first dive of the day, 
if your ending pressure group is W or X, the minimum surface interval between all subsequent dives is one hour. If your ending pressure group after any dive is Y or Z, the minimum surface interval between all subsequent dives is going to be three hours. Since little is presently known about the physiology and physical effects of multiple dives over multiple days, you're wise to make fewer dives and limit your exposure toward the end of a multi-day dive series. So despite all the efforts to plan properly and well within safety limits of the table and diving the plans, there are occasions that no decompression limits may be exceeded by mistake. And in this kind of cases, we'll need to do an emergency decompression stop or emergency safety stop. Uh, if a no decompression limit is exceeded by no more than five minutes, an eight minute decompression stop at 15 feet is mandatory. Upon surfacing, the diver must remain out of water for at least six hours prior to making another dive. If a no decompression limit is exceeded by more than five minutes, a 15 feet decompression stop of no less than 15 minutes is urged. Upon surfacing, the diver must remain out of water for at least 24 hours prior to entering the water again. Next, let's talk about the rules for flying after diving, okay? For divers within the no decompression limits, single dives, a minimum pre-flight surface interval of 12 hours is suggested. If you do repetitive dives and or multi-day dives, a minimum pre-flight surface interval of 18 hours is suggested. For those divers requiring decompression stops, a minimum pre-flight surface interval greater than 18 hours is suggested. Remember that all these information are fine printed on the back of your RDP. So you don't need to memorize anything. You can always use RDP and look for these and uh, these information are available when you're solving any problem. Also remember that diving at altitude, which is about 1000 feet or higher, requires the use of a special procedure and is not covered with the diving table that we just discussed. Okay, and this brings us to the end of this uh, educational video of RDP. Uh, again, full disclosure and preparation of this video, I have used PADI material. Uh, the RDP, the Recreational Dive Planner, is a PADI product that I used it multiple times in this video. I also have references to uh, PADI manuals, PADI instructor manuals, and guides that PADI has provided to instructors like me to be able to teach our students the best. Always dive safe and thank you for watching this video.